Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Knowledge. As many of you guys probably already know, as of May 15th, Target is going to suspend selling of Pokemon cards and some other sports cards and stuff like that. I did go into two Targets today. Today's date's May 12th, the time of recording this video. And one of the Targets still seem to still be selling cards. They've just limited to one day a week. At that Target, it was Tuesdays only. They said a lot of Targets do Fridays. But because of staffing issues, they still to do Tuesday. Now, for a different target I went to, they had a sign up that said, To ensure the safety of our guests and team members effective May 14th, MLB, NFL, NBA, and Pokemon trading cards will no longer be sold in stores until further notice. So I don't know why that sign was only hanging up in one target. It could just be the t a small chance that the other target just hasn't, you know, had that sign come through corporate yet in order to stop selling cards. But either way, you guys already know all this information. That's not the topic of this video. What I really want to have is the conversation of, okay, if Target stops selling cards and, say, another big box retail like Walmart stops selling cards, we've already heard a little bit of rumors that Walmart has stopped selling Pokemon cards on different store-to-store basises. They're storing the cards in different places. Now they're at customer services, but Walmart's been kind of all over the place. And for the most part, Targets have been all over the place too with how you can pick up cards, where you can get it from, what the limits were. You know, some of the Targets were doing virtual lines, some weren't. So that's what we're definitely seeing is a widespread of the, you know, different policies for different individual stores, which is, you know, not really something you would expect to see for a large chain such as Target or Walmart. But hey, it's 2021, here we are. But the question we're going to try to answer in this video is, you know, from a very large, more macro standpoint, what is this going to do for the market because of, you know, the distributors that are supplying Walmarts and Targets with a lot of product? And the two, you know, those two, Walmart and Target, I don't have hard numbers for you. I don't have the exact figures, but I could, you know, more or less guarantee you that they're some of the largest buyers of Pokemon product in the hobby. You know, if you added up every store and how much supply just goes to them. So the question is, if we see a trickle back effect going back to like MJ Holdings, what can this mean on a larger scale for the market for all these other stores? Because I'll tell you right now, I could only imagine what those conversations are like because for... A distributor like MJ Holdings, you know, being so large, being so fast, and having the ability to supply all these stores. And logistically, in order to supply the pallets and SKUs and, you know, just massive supply that they supply to Walmarts and Targets, I don't know exactly how much product they have coming in and out, but it has to be a pretty crazy amount. And, you know, when you have your two biggest clients just more or less go cold turkey on you and they're not selling product anymore, MJ Holdings is definitely going to feel it. And that will trickle all the way back to, you know, like Pokemon Company in itself. But you got to really ask your question. I'm sure a lot of you guys, you know, deal with different types of businesses on a day to day basis. And it doesn't matter if you're talking Walmart or even local mom and pop sh stores or it doesn't really even matter the business. In different companies, there's different relationships, you know, that are formed. And I'm sure that at some level up the corporate ladder for Target, there is some vice president or, you know, director or so, or, you know, whatever their title is, and somebody pretty high up in MJ Holdings that have a very good dialogue with each other, have good communication, make some really big deals on paper, you know, like the contracts that Walmart and Target have in order to get this product at MSRP. And, you know, we always talk about MSRP on this channel, but the prices that Target and Walmart are getting their product at is much lower than like your local LGS. So their profit margins selling at MSRP have the ability to be much higher. But these contracts are negotiated at a very high level when it comes to the corporate ladder of both Target and MJ Holdings. Because the only way you get really good deals like that is you just have to you know, purchase a ton of product. 
And we all know that Target and Walmart, they do have that ability. So the question is, okay, if MJ Holdings cannot deliver product to these stores anymore, well, what's going to happen to it? Because it's not a question of demand, right? It's not that the demand isn't there to purchase this product. It's just that MJ Holdings literally has their hands tied and they can't supply the stores with product because the stores won't sell it. So honestly, my honest answer for this is I just don't see it lasting very long. I think a lot of the issues are definitely on a much more you know micro level, meaning store the store and not just a macro level, meaning the entire corporation as a whole. It's going to be very hard, and I don't, this, and this is, I should already have said this if you guys haven't figured it out yet. This video is totally speculation. I don't have a lot of, you know, hard facts. This is just, you know, my understanding of businesses and how things run and, you know, things that make sense to me when I try to talk them out. But I'm sure, Wal, you know, <clears throat> Targets and Walmarts, their contracts probably have some wording in there that they're you know, have to purchase X amount of products from these companies. Now, I don't know if they have like, you know, some f fine line wording in their contracts that say pretty much at any point at our discretion, we can just stop buying product from you 100%. You know, for a Target and Walmart, I don't know how their contracts are written. Could that possibly be a, a, a line in that contract? Yeah, sure. I guess it is. But at the same time, like I'm saying, from a large corporate standpoint, I don't see them just pulling this plug indefinitely. I think it's going to be on a very short-term basis. And I think a lot of that is because I think Target is more or less scrambling to figure out a policy that really works. Because like I said, different Targets in different areas have different policies it's not an entire across the board policy and i've i think we've seen them Im implicate a lot of things that just don't work and they never really worked even you know right off the bat their online the virtual line that didn't really work out very well at the very beginning because you had the check-in at in the store then from the time that Target sent you a text message, you had to be at the store within 10 minutes. They quickly got rid of that, and then it was just as soon as you got the text, you can go into the store. They were constantly changing around how much product you can buy. It went from like three items per person down to one. Then it was, well, now you can only get product one day a week. But by doing that, Target was artificially bottlenecking the supply, right? And Target was still getting their normal she shipments in. And, you know, by keeping all that product at customer service, at least at my two Targets, all the product was kept at customer service, but it was like kind of in the back room. So if you were standing at the counter, you weren't even able to see what they had in stock. So when you went to the counter, you would have to let them know, okay, I would like to purchase, you know, my one Pokemon product. And then they would just look at you and say, okay, what do you want? And it's like, I don't know. What, what products do you have in stock today? And, you know, when you're talking about a customer service representative having to facilitate, like, yes, that's a very simple question of what do you have in stock that day? But at the same time, it takes time for them to do that for every single person in that virtual line trying to ask what products they have and you know the truth of the matter is for me for you out there listening if i were to walk up to you and say i'm looking for any hidden fates products you have i'm looking for pikachu v boxes i'm looking for single pack check lane blisters of vivid voltage with score bunny grookey or sable or i'm looking for battle styles, ETBs, or do you have any vivid voltage back there? Do you have any three-pack blisters or, you know, just you name it. Right now we have the Galarian Rapidash V boxes. You got the Urshavu. You know, there's just so many products out there for Pokemon. To go up to somebody that has no clue about Pokemon and ask them, 
do they have these product in? It's just you make things much harder from, you know, like a corporate standpoint because the people behind the counter and you got to feel bad for them. You can't get angry at them. You can't get upset. You just have to feel bad for them because they're not the ones making the rules. You know, your normal target associate, they're not the ones making the rules. They don't know anything about Pokemon. How frustrating that must have been, I can't even imagine. And they must have wanted to just like go crazy a lot of time having to, you know, constantly facilitate a lot of the questions that collectors and investors have. And you know what? For a lot of the scalpers out there, probably the scalpers are just as educated, sadly, because they understand what are the hot products and they understand how to make money in the market. So, yeah, it was just Target artificially bottlenecking stuff. I'm not really here to give answers of what I think is the right thing for them to do, but I do believe that Target is having the conversation at least and figuring out what is a way that works out the best for everybody, not just for us, not just for them. And yeah, the news stories and stuff that have been happening, you know, a few days ago was like somebody pulled a gun in a parking lot and, you know, just crazy stories. And it's kind of hard sometimes for me to relate to this because I don't see it that often. I don't really get the chance to stand in line and wait for distributors because I have to work Monday through Friday. I have a normal job, so I'm not there. I'm not really seeing the craze. You know, I've seen some of the YouTube videos and stuff that people post. It's definitely crazy. But anyways, you know, back to the topic. So if MJ Holdings now can't get rid of this product because Target isn't accepting it and potentially in the future, you know, Walmart stores won't be accepting it either. So where's all this product going to go? So maybe we'll start to see either one, Target Online, you know, start to have more product. Maybe Walmart.com, and you know Walmart.com is real tricky, right? Because it's not just Walmart. It's a bunch of like third-party companies on there selling. But like the actual Walmart, the actual Target, Target being great to buy product online because for Target, you spend over $35 free shipping. You know, maybe we'll see a little bit more product online for Pokemon Center because MJ Holdings isn't going to want to sit on a, you know, pallets and pallets of this stuff because I told you logistically, I don't know how much product gets delivered to MJ Holdings warehouses, you know, monthly, but I'm sure it's a lot. And I'm sure if you have a ton of product, you know, constantly piling up at the warehouses, MJ Holdings is going to do whatever they can to start to divvy out that product to other people that they have accounts with. And I know that MJ Holdings has, you know, accounts with even like Walgreens and stuff because we've seen a lot of the, like the Walgreen mystery packs are super famous. You know, some of them have vintage packs and it's like one out of five chance. Everybody loves those. They sell out like almost instantly when they're in stock. But all that's packaged by MJ Holdings. So I don't know exactly who MJ Holdings provides I, i'm guessing gamestop i can't say that with 100 percent certainty but maybe we'll start to see these other stores like party cities and best buys and stores that have really been hit or miss lately for having product maybe we'll start to see them picking up some of these supplies but then that just brings up the question well if best buys and party cities and all these other and gamestops start to get a huge supply of product are we going to start to see like the same restrictions start to roll in for a lot of these companies. But it has to make you ask the question too, what is this going to do to prices on the secondary market? Because, you know, the truth of the matter is a lot of people, including myself, and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there, I've preached on multiple occasions, you should always get your product at MSRP when possible. Yeah, you can't get booster boxes at Target, but I'm sure a lot of you guys picked up a lot of your other products at Target or Walmart. So if we don't have that ability, because we would go to Targets and Walmarts because, you know, they have the most inventory coming in and out. So in the short term, if people aren't able to pick up product at MSRP, you could start to see that really trickle into the secondary market and cause a very short-term drastic inflation of prices for newer products. And the only reason will be because it will be like the you know end of 2020, beginning of 2021, all over again, where product is just super scarce. 
And with a lot of really popular, really hype sets coming up in the very near term, Chillin' Reigns, Eevee Heroes, and 25th Anniversary, depending on how long this hiatus that Target is going to do, not selling products last, you know, in the short term, meaning a month or two, you could see a secondary market price peak. And a lot of that, again, is really going to be like a hardcore artificial price increase because that price increase is going to be really based off of no other factors except for people literally have no ability to pick up the product, you know, at, you know, a lot of the MSRP type places. And that's what that's going to mean. What does that mean going to be for the long run? Well, I think in the long run, you're going to have a lot of this product back up at the warehouses and then eventually like flood onto the market later. And when you have a huge flood later, that has all the signs of a huge market crash coming for modern. Because right now, one of the things that keeps modern prices at a relatively steady level and potentially even increasing level is the fact that as supply hits the market, it's eaten up by collectors, investors, flippers, and everybody in between, right? That waves that come in, they just go away. But if you have that wave, you know, imagine like a dam and you just got all this water building up behind this dam and then all of a sudden somebody just opens all the valves and just dumps that dam into the market. The, you know, the level on the other side is just going to increase so rapidly because it's trying to find that equilibrium and balance itself out. So you could see that happen. And that would be more of a long-term effect if the hiatus at Target and potentially Walmart do take last for a long time. And maybe that, you know, backup and then huge flood on the market will be what will be the catalyst to finally like slow down a lot of the hype or at least slow down the secondary market prices, which I think a lot of those prices drive so much of the demand for modern. And it's interesting, guys. It's an interesting conversation. It's an interesting topic. Really, I want to know what you guys think. I want to know your thoughts because one of the things I'm extremely impressed about about this channel and just this hobby in general is you know, how well-informed and how knowledgeable a lot of you guys are. So I really am curious what your, your takes and what your thoughts are on this topic. And again, like I told you before, this entire video is just speculation. And this entire channel as a whole is just one long conversation. And that's all we're doing. We're having a conversation. But hey, listen, guys, if somehow you've made it to this point in the video and you're still not subscribed, do me a favor. Go down below, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next video.